Ladies and gentlemen, we are Group 9. And we are here to talk about the most important thing in a human's life. A thing without which humans cannot survive for long. And no, it's not Wi-Fi. It's food. <laughs> so, how many of you are here are food lovers? Raise a hand, please. Wow, that's it. You're not? Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, each and every person over here is a food lover, except him. <laughs> but, okay. So, how many of you over here prefer chilies over Olive Garden? Raise a hand again. I like chilies too. How many of you prefer what burger over salmon? Wow, a lot of people. That's cool. So, let me tell you this. If you are able to select where you're going to eat your next meal from, then consider yourself one of the luckiest person on this planet. Because about 36% of the people in not only the world, not in America, but in Dallas alone, do not know where their next meal is coming from. Now 36, it may look like a really small number, but when it comes to food insecurity, that is a really big number. And we, we as Whole Foods, want to make a difference. Myself, Vikram, Jacob, Nick, and Krista. All of us want to make a difference in this dynamic. And now I'm going to call upon Nick, who's going to talk about more, more about this dynamic. All right, so we're going to break our um, presentation into two different steps. We have first would be food insecurity in general. Um, as previously stated, 36% of Dallas is food impoverished. Um, we plan on donating food that has minor deformities um, that would not affect the health at all of the people. Um, with Whole Foods being a large grocery store chain as we are, we have five stores in Dallas alone. And between the five stores, we have a large amount of produce that we um, throw away because of deformities, irregular shapes, anything like that. And um, as the department that we are, we'd like to, instead of throwing all that food away, we like to get together with different organizations and give them to the people who most need them. All right, and then my second approach is gonna be <coughs> food desert, which would be, the second approach is going to be not only feeding people, but it's going to be feeding them healthy food alternatives. Um, so food desert would be what, all that purple, that's a, kind of the food desert. It's when you, it, there's a certain amount of distance between um, that people can go before they get to a grocery store. So most of Dallas use public transportation or walking. So if you think about it, if it's more than a mile, two miles away, or not on any uh, major routes that public transportation goes on, people aren't going to go there. So, but it, to make it very clear, it's not the lack of food, it's a lack of healthy food alternatives. So they still have like fast food, convenience stores, and things like that, but that will lead to unhealthy habits, and eventually will just um, hurt our efforts in general. So an interesting statistic would be that Dallas has 30.9% obesity rate, while the United States is only at 29, and the state of Texas is at 27. So if we can combat not only poverty, or uh, food impoverishment, as well as um, feeding them nutrient-rich foods, then it will kind of help both sides, as well as overall increasing the healthiness of the city. So I'm gonna pass it on to Krista. Yes, so now I'm going to talk about the food that is wasted by Whole Foods. So between 20 and 30% of the produce that is harvested by our farmers is thrown away, um, often just because of its appearance. It doesn't meet the strict aesthetic standards um, that we currently have. About a third of the planet's food goes to waste, and this is often just because of the way that it looks. That number is enough to feed two billion people. So we as Whole Foods decided that it was time to take a stand and to do something about it. So Nick is going to talk about the plan. Okay, so at the plan, I already mentioned our two-pronged approach. So we're going to use our powers of grocery <coughs> chain to provide healthy or healthy meals to low-income families, low homeless um, people. And um, this food is, like I said, is not attractive to display in stores. Um, so we plan to donate 100% of the food that is not attractive, not just on a smaller percentage, the 100% of it. Um, and then we're going to rely on our partnering organizations that I'll mention in a minute. And they, we are physically going to hand them the food. And since they have a better understanding of the community, they are going to physically hand it out. So that makes our plan a little bit different than just handing food ourselves. It's going to save time and money. So we're going to use organizations and use their people instead of wasting you know, money that we'd ask for the city. Um, so this plan is only authorized for one year at this moment. But if it 
and then after that, uh, Whole Foods is going to reevaluate it. And if it's successful, we're going to continue um, by a year to year basis. Um, so, and it's also important to show that our meals are going to consist of fruit and vegetables. We're going to rely on other organizations if people want meats and other dairy products. But people can live off fruits and vegetables. So if they're picky, then they kind of have to suck it up because this is what they're going to have for right now, at least. All right, I'm going to pass it on. Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> All right, so I'm not even talking about the partnering organization. So we have two major ones, which is Bonton Farms and Fellowship Church. So Bonton Farms is an urban farm that um, that has huge community outreach potential as well as employs a large amount of South Dallas. Um, they really have a good knowledge of the community. They were started from the community. So it would be, it's almost unvalued. We can't match what they can give to the community. So in us handing them the food, it would almost be, say, half the time compared to us doing it ourselves. And then with Fellowship Church, they're a large urban church. And once again, they have a large conjugation, they have a food pantry, and they're very involved in the community. So they would know who needs the food the most, especially in their conjuga conjugation. And then we have three smaller ones. We have Dallas Life, Cornerstone Baptist Church, and Hunger Busters. And they all have a smaller role, but since we have such a large volume of food that we're going to give out, it's in, we want to make sure every food or every ounce of food is used properly. We don't want to have anything go to waste. All right. Now I'm going to pass on to Krista. Okay, so I am going to talk about the who, the where, and the how. So we as Whole Foods are going to be distributing to the partnering organizations that Nick mentioned, where um, our central location is going to be at our Park Lane um, store, which is really close to the impoverished areas and the partnering organizations that we are going to be working with. And then how? We will be... Um, purchasing three trucks as well as hiring drivers so that they can go weekly distribute this food to our partners and we will also be doing this hopefully uh, if this is a successful plan then we would love for it to grow into a service that could be requested by organizations in the area we will also be using the workers of our store at park lane to load the trucks and then the volunteers at the organizations that we're delivering to will help us unload this will ease the process and will also save a lot of time and money. And now Jacob's going to talk about the budget. Hey guys. So now for the most fun part of every presentation, the budget. Um, so we at Whole Foods, this isn't the first time that we've donated food, obviously, but we feel that our model is going to be the most successful. So there was 36 Whole Foods locations in the southeast United States and they donated roughly 1.4 million pounds of food in the first half of 2016. That comes out to about 38,889 pounds of food, and then, you know, about 77,000, 78,000 pounds for a full year, give or take a few, a little exact. So we feel we can match these donations at each of our stores in the Dallas area. So that's five stores, comes out to about 388,889 pounds of food in a full year. Using local food indexes and dietary requirements from that, we found that the value of the food donated is going to come out to about $1,384,444. Now, after working in, we're going to buy three trucks. It's going to cost about $75,000. Uh, we're going to have, have to pay wages on a weekly basis for the guys that are driving, about $9,360. Another $1,560 for gas, $6,000 that we've worked in uh, as repairs, whatever the trucks need, you, know, you never know what's going to happen. And then the total, along with the food cost, is going to be 1.476. It's a big number. What we decided to do is we're going to absorb the cost of the food, since it is food that we're already paying for, and you know we feel that that's going to help the city out by saving them money. So you look at this pie chart. That little sliver right there is all that we're asking, all we want to focus on right now, and y'all need to focus on. So the first number. $91,920. That's that sliver right there. All we're asking for the Chamber of Commerce is to split that with us, which comes out to $45,960. Now, what we're saving y'all, if y'all wanted to take up this kind of project of this size, is $1,430,404. Put that in perspective, you could get 15 four-year degrees with that much money going here. And now, I'm going to pass it on to Krista. 
Okay, so our goal for this project is to provide the necessary fruits and vegetables for 13,000 people uh, a month. This equates to 155,556 people per year. So the current homeless budget for the city of Dallas is $7.2 million. Um, in these efforts, we plan to provide meals for 30% of the homeless population, thus cutting the budget 20% um, for the city. And also, we believe that in meeting these needs and um, kind of alleviating the stress of food insecure people, they won't have to worry and stress about where their next meal will come from. We believe that this will overall just improve behavior, improve crime rate, and also improve the image of the city that is most affected by food insecurity. And now Vikram is going to conclude our presentation. All right, like previously stated, about 36% of the city of Dallas are food insecure, and our goal is to feed 13,000 people per month. And all, all we are asking to do that is 45,960. We are hopeful, and our motto is to feed the hunger and eliminate the waste.